This is a special series for our 16 days of activism campaign and today we will hear from a woman who has spent decades working for and with women to empower them. So ma'am, aapne ek to apna porchay diben amader shobar jonno. Thank you very much Shama. Uh, this is Wahida Banu Shapna. I'm the founder member and the executive director of Oparajoy Bangladesh. And Oparajoy Bangladesh is a national child rights organization. Anyway, we say human rights organization. And we are working throughout the country. And we have also worked in the SAR countries uh, related to uh, disadvantaged children, women, and the uh, youth particularly. So we are working for their betterment and the improved life and the quality of life so that they become the educated, skilled and productive citizen. And we have been working since 26 years in the country. Uh, it was founded in 1995 in, in, the, in Bangladesh as a national child rights organization. Ma'am, would you please tell us that what are the barriers and obstacles to achieving gender equality? Uh, thank you. This is a huge question because uh, all over the world, not in the South Asia, not in only in Bangladesh, we know that gender discrimination is an issue, big issue. So gender uh, barriers of our inequality are very, very wider and deep rooted. You know, so mainly it's the attitude, the way we think about the women and the men and their role in the society and how they are acting and reacting in the socio-economic and political and cultural states. So the barriers is mainly how we are accepting the role of the women, how we are actually treating women in the society, how women uh, are working, men are working. So defining the role is also very important. So throughout the uh, country, the culturally, it is very deep rooted that we believe in the role, defined role in the society. And the way we also uh, support our uh, generation to promote the same attitude, same cultural practice, same approach, same definition, same way of, you know, mannerism or, you know, grooming, socialization process. So in all the steps, we are actually promoting the inequalities and the way we are seeing in the society that how the gender role or women's role in the society. Say, for example, in the media, in the news media, in the you know parliamentary uh, affairs you see the role of the parliament members there is a quota system so in the political pa participation in the social system in the economic system in each and every stage is the role is has been defined and many of the times that has been the promoting you know tools so the acceptance the attitude towards the women and the practices is always been negative and that has been accepted by our you know policy makers by our gatekeepers by the general mass and we particularly the women our grandma grandfathers they also are not the same approach in the country so these are the attitude uh, are the main uh, factors and the barriers for general and the role uh, to improve in the country. So do you think that the way that a person is raised can affect their gender identity? Obviously, because the social system and the socialization process and the grooming system is such a way, you know, right from the beginning of their life, even the newborn babies, they are the way they are treated in the country, in the family, in the society, the role has been defined since then. So boys and the girls are differentiated in the different way and the total grooming process and the socialization process in the family, in the school, in the society, even in the state party, it is widely and clearly written up. We have seen in our textbook, we have seen in the playground, we have seen in the classroom. So everything is uh, like a, you know, differentiate such a way that you can easily know in which room you are going to go because you are a girl you are going to go in the girls room or in the girls common room so the way the socialization process is been uh, you know practicing in the country so we are learning through our education through our school college university and mostly you know it has been always said 
that women's and the girls uh, role in the society is like a, uh, in a barometer. So when you see the role of the men, uh, girls and the boys, then you understand what kind of society it is. So socialization process is the main thing and which is truly differentiating the role of the boys and the girls because it is boys and the girls are the distinct character, you know, by according to biological science. So it cannot be changed, but the society has been defining the role. So that's why society has to change the grooming approach and the process. So ma'am, just now you have said that society is defining the rules. So why do you think that obvious incorrect gender stereotypes like that all girls like pink still remain in society? Uh, this is obvious because the, you know, when you are in a society, you are the member of the society and the family. So you understand that how you are raising up with your parents, with your teachers, with your friends and the peers. So when you are like uh, a girl, we are identifying the girls and the women like a moon, very weak character, very my dear, very noble, very amiable, you know. The approach has to be like a very feminine. So the way it is defined the character, the way uh, they are linking the, uh, their likings and dislikings. So when you are a girl, you are very soft, so you like the flower colors, you know. Pink is a mostly flower color, so you like yellow, orange, pink, these are the colors. And for the boys, always boys has been treated like they are sun, they are lion, they are very powerful. So they like blue or they like white or they like black. These are the, it's sort of like symbolic, you know, issues and a stereotype issues in the uh, society. But it's not that we are not uh, coming out from the barriers. It's not that we are coming out from this stereotype choices of our life. <coughs> there are always uh, uh, options, alternative options of the life. So when the people have a very clear understanding that uh, I'm not a simply a girl or woman, I'm a human being, then you can change your stereotype in a other way. So this has to be a process. It is a long process. It's not very easy because it's a total concept of understanding that I'm a, first of all, I'm a human being, homo sapiens. Then I'm a girl. I'm have a, I have a role in the society. So if you understand very clearly that I am truly equal to a boy, so you can do whatever you like to do in the society. But it's not always that easy that whatever you like you can do that in the society because when you will be practicing the society will be identifying you that you are doing something against the social norms, social values and many of the times it's linked with the religious values too. But no religion books has written ever that boys and the girls are not similar, they don't have equal power, they cannot practice the same thing. It is all about the society created the stereotype roles. That's why many of us, many of the girls, they like to be a very nice girl in the society, so called good girls in the society. What is the difference between gender equity, gender equity and women's empowerment? Gender equity, equity is like uh, justice, you know, judgment. So the way we are working boys and the girls, the way we are judging the boys, the same way, in the same manner, in the same tools, in the same measure, we have to judge our girls and the women. So in any way, it never been uh, done in justice to the women. So it is all about the strategic part. It's not the needs and the demand we are approaching to. So equity is something like very weak. Say for example, uh, we have a quota system in the parliament. So we say, okay, why not we need that uh, women's, uh, you know, participation in the um, our parliament. So that is something like this is a question of equity because it is not a uh, uh, total judgment to the women folk and the uh, women uh, parliamentarian members. So it is sort of like positive discrimination. We said, okay, you are a man, so you cannot fight for equally with the men. So be there 
as a women parliamentarian members. So this is something like a good example to understand that if they are doing the direct election, then it comes like okay, they are in a equity practices is there. So this is very clear that judgmental issue, fairnessness, or same way it has been given distribution is been done, treated uh, treatment is done, responsibility goes such a way it has to be equal partnership and participation. These things are very much related to equity. And equality is something like, okay, we are doing anything, it's doing that same way it will go. Like, it's, it's not power practice, but it is a opportunity practices. It's like service are given to you, uh, like you are going to school, your brothers also going to a school. So given the priority is like, uh, okay, we are giving opportunity. We are giving a little bit of doing a little bit of favor that both of you can go to the schools or the colleges or can participate in any events. So that is sort of like, you know, boys and the girls, men and women, they are uh, participating or we are as if we are giving you the, you know, scope, giving you the opportunity, giving you the responsibility or a bit options, okay, you can join. So this is a sameness or you equally you are doing boys and the girls same way, doing the same thing. But it is not judgmental, not the justice are doing. It is very much uh, related to, you know, you know, participating in the events, you know, like you are in the dining table, having the food, the food has to be distributed equally. So you are having the food, but many of the times it's not the practices. No? Always the good part of the food is always in the men's part whoever is the man in the family members. So food habits is a big and very good example. And uh, women empowerment is a very vast issue. Uh, vast issue in a sense that women, they have to first of all understand about the human rights, their own rights as a human being, what is their understanding about themselves, what is their role, what is their capacity, because each and every human being has a unique power their uh, inner power, their potentials, their capacity, their, there are so many you know, virtues in, in them. So they have to understand that they are having many understanding, capacity, knowledge. If uh, they are not uh, educated even, they have many understanding, good knowledges at the indigenous level. So these are the things they, first of all, they have to understand. Okay, I know that who I am, and how I'm going to do and practice my role in my family or in my working place or at the you know, society or maybe in the political party or wherever I am posted to. So the women when they understand their power, their role and they understand what would be their role in the society, how they are practicing. So the, in the practice level when it is transforming from knowledge to practice the equal partnership and participation has to be ensured, then it would be truly powerful. Empowerment is itself an enlightenment in, in all aspects, it's not only in the house, it's not only in the working place. So through their understanding, through their work, through their practice, through their, through their speech, through their you know doings whatever the roles they are doing in the society so the way they are working and the way they are promoting women's role in the society that means that they are powerful they know their ability they know what their capacity and they are uh, capacitated such a way they can actually move the women folk in a different way that no this is not the women's role this is the perfect and the Ethiopian women's role in the society. It has to be approached, it has to be done, it has to be, you know, practices by all the women uh, generation and the women folk. So, what kind of challenges you had to face when you founded Opera Jeo Bangladesh? It was in 1994, uh, there was an international organization called Teredas Home Switzerland. They had a very uh, large, you know, very large interventions in the country since 1974, during from the famine in the country. So they have decided in 1992 that they are going to relinquish all of their projects from Bangladesh. 
and at that time I was working as a you know program coordinator so there are other staff too they know that the organization would be no more in the country because all the international organization they have their own agenda they are coming to Bangladesh to work to serve and when their agenda is fulfilled or they have the time frame it is over they go and they wash their hands so at that time we were working we uh, we were used to serving about 2000 children in the children living on the streets and the Islamic squatter and settlements so we had a very bad feelings you know all on a sudden we are going to stop the organization and all the projects and particularly for these children and the destitute women then uh, we actually, the Bangladeshi team, the national groups, we've been together in a meeting, in a farewell meeting, because everybody was looking for a job. So, particularly, I raised the issue, and I said that uh, I had very bad feelings that we are going to stop the work, and we are looking for a good job. And fortunately, or unfortunately, I got three jobs. One, one uh, was in uh, UNICEF. As a gender consultant, then I got a job in the um, in a care Bangladesh as a uh, training program coordinator. Then in the ILO as a consultant, you know, on their uh, working children's project. So I was holding the three appointment letters, and I was thinking that when I'm going to join, but be before joining, I want to see the true status of the children. How we are going to settle them? How we are going to say that from that day? will be going to stop all the support we have been giving since long long time to them like three times a meal there are schooling education recreational facilities the mothers are used to get their uh, also support they used to get the wheat rice and many things from them so at that time the ngos are not that like very you know tight and in, in the framework they are very loose like giving fish you know people are poor, they have to give something, they are given something to the children and the mother. So the issue was not that easy to the mother and the children because they are like when they got the information they are like what? When you are going to stop it? Why? So there was many why. So we had a discussions, long discussions, then we have decided that uh, can we take it over? Can we make an uh, approach to them? How we can uh, continue the work. How can we run the show, you know, show? So there are many members. They say no, 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 no. It is. It would be an another burden because when you are going to service, give them the service to the women and the children. It, it is. It means service means money. Without money, you cannot give anything for the education, for the food, for the clothes, for the recreational facilities, the schooling. For every purpose, you need money. Then we actually um, we are a bit, you know step back and we were thinking that what to do then finally i came up with the idea let's you know form one ngo ma'am so how do you sum up your working experience till now it's a very long issue and long story but i'll make it very short cut because um, the way i had a dream uh, in my childhood but i started working in the different different ideas different institutions finally ended up with Apology of Bangladesh and I struggled a lot. I uh, truly, uh, I was very devoted, motivated and with my commitment, with my team, I worked very hard and I think that I truly make it happen. And I'm sure that if you are sincere, if you are devoted and committed and if you know your correct, true, accurate destination, then you can reach the goal. So I feel myself that I have successfully uh, with all the you know struggle, all the you know ups and downs, but finally we could reach successfully at the end of the day my goal and the dreams is truly materialized. Last but not the least, can you please share your insight on this year's 16 days of activism theme, Orange the World, End Violence Against Women Now. I think this is something like all over the world, you know, all the people, all the women, they have agreed to be in the mobilization on 16 days activism to end violence against women. This is a um, like a concept, idea, and this is something like many of the times it becomes like a slogan or captions. So the issue is, it's not about only the 16 days, 
But the issue is all over the country, the women and the men who believes that we have to stop the violence against women. So they should be coming up with their ideas, with their work, with their approach, with their many interventions. Maybe many of them, they never had the dream to work in that, in this area, but now through these inner you know, processes, they have started something very new. So the issue that if we truly agree, I will say again, at the family level, society level, at the national level, international level, if we truly believe that we have to end the violence against the women, so there are many things we have to implement. First of all, the attitude towards the women, then the, how we are practicing the grooming process, socialization process, how we are teaching our generation, the students and the children, youth and the young generation and the young women who doesn't have that much you know, understanding and the capacity. And then how many legislations, laws, policies are there in favor of the women's rights for the betterment, for the better quality of life, to improve their quality of life. So we have to review all those laws, all those policies that are truly supporting women's empowerment, women's right to be established in a society. So this is the time we have to review the policy, review the legislations, review the laws for the women, so that we can say that this time we are reviewing our status, what is the socio-economic condition of the country. As part the given situation, we have to compare how much we have done previous days, how far we have gone, how much we have invested in this area, what was the budget for the women's empowerment, and how uh, it has been a true expenditure. So we have to see all the steps, how the policy makers, parliamentarians, how the gatekeepers, they actually acted in favor of ending violence against women. So these are all the steps we have to go through so that we can, at the end of the 16 days activism, we can say that we have reviewed the whole country's status, uh, legal framework, and uh, you know, it's sort of like, uh, like annual report to check back and look back what we have done across the years. So at the end of the day, we can say that what are the legislation that needs to be changed? What are the new policies we are truly demanding? What are the areas we have to demand from our policy makers and the gatekeepers? In which area we are truly not working or not touching? What are the areas very hard to reach? Uh, as for example, we know that uh, sustainable development goal is our main target now to achieve and it is defined by the world leaders. So we have to see now, as the main principle of the SDG goal is, no one would be left behind. So uh, if we see that part, there are many uh, women folk in the uh, island area, in the Chitagong Hill tracks, many hard to reach minority groups. So they are not actually in the mainstreaming society. So we have to decide that how far we can go next year and next year and next year. Next five years, what would be our role and the responsibility? What are the our uh, prioritized agenda should be, you know, uh, fixed up by the government? Next plan of action, how they are going to go and going to address who, who would be the actors in which area? How much would be the budget allocated for the women rights uh, issues and women empowerment issues? And all the issues that, that is linked with the women empowerment, like girl, uh, early marriage is a big issue, dowry is a big issue, all the time we see the violence against the girls and the women. So these are the issues has to be given priority. And finally, the, if the government and the policy makers, they are coming up the idea, with the idea that, okay, at the end of the 16 days activities, we are having a very clear picture, how far we have done, and how much we can going to go with our next, next plan of action in the country. So slowly and steadily in the, all over the countries, all over the world, all the countries will have their next five years strategy or plan of action. That will be meaningful. That will be a successful uh, you know, uh, result or outcome of the 16 days activism.
Ma'am, what would you like to say to all the women out there who are being inspired by you? To all the women and all the girls, uh, I would like to say that each and everyone has a inner potentialities. Uh, there are many virtues in you. So be confident, be strong, have a good dream and the destination. And if you have to fight for uh, your uh, reaching the destination, reaching the goal, so come up and stand and look forward to reach your goal and you will be succeeded.